Ruiz. The, the new compilation, as I mentioned in the beginning, is Cosmic Relief, Groove Healing, and Verbal Remedies. And on that one, I really like uh, Row and Let's Ride <laughs> and uh, Hold Your Voltage. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Let's Ride. Um, I think uh, Stone Gosser, he, he wants to do, he may re re uh, mix and re-release that one because he, he really wants to do that one and i think he wants to do a couple other ones too uh, sos as well possibly on uh, loose groove coming up but th yeah thank you and hold your voltage i like that title you know because uh that's something i tell myself is like I, I tell myself kind of mantras but things i make i make up that make sense to me you know that that uh, hold your voltage is like you like we're all electromagnetic entities you know like whether we, we 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 realize it or talk about it or not you know we're so like into labels and identifications that we don't realize that we're like electromagnetic we're an electromagnetic field so we like it we like uh we respond to each other in that way too, like you know, electro and electromagnetic, yeah, yes, yeah, stimulus and response. Yeah, so hold your voltage is like just being balanced in in yourself and not reacting to everything or, re, or reacting. Like I've also been practicing something that's been really helpful for me to to stay focused because I realize it's not easy to stay focused. But growing up in South Central, hearing helicopters and a lot of chaos going around, that helps too and like being in an apartment complex with a, like different all kind of different music blasting from every area you know um, but hold your voltage is something that uh, you know keeps me balanced and um, it just sa says that there's only two forms of uh, uh, electromagnetic interaction and that's constructive interference and destructive interference and so just I just been practicing choosing one, you know, just like is this destructive interference or is this constructive? No, nah, it's definitely constructive interference with Scott Golding. Yeah, it's constructive interference. But is with it me. AC is it AC or DC? Huh? Is it alternating it's, or direct current? It's both. Yeah. Yeah, and it alternates that way too. Alternates back and forth. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, it's like a flow, just like not uh, taking, taking yourself off of the flow. You know, my flow, my path has nothing to do with anything anybody else is doing, really. You know, so if I react to something somebody else is doing or saying, then I'm like, uh, I'm, not, I'm thrown off of my path, which is something that, that I can't see or you can't see in the material realm. But... You can be distracted by the material realm from that. That's deep, man. You're getting deep on me. Oh, thank you, bro. Hey, I got I got to show you this too. A couple more things I got to show. You I think you're going to appreciate. What is that? That is. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Yeah, what is it, Megana? Was I can barely see it. It's a uh, Black Master, the Illuminati, weapon of choice, hand yeah. hand handwritten by you with a signature. <laughs> oh, that's a uh, you know that's the funny story about uh, Illuminati. That record is. Uh, do you have the the one with the green cover too? 
This is the only one I have. Oh, okay. I Let think. Me see. Yeah, I don't have the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't have the commercial release. I just have this one. Yeah, because there was um, Illuminati. It's a Illuminati. It's available, and uh, you know that was uh, when at the beginning of Pro Tools we were recording that, and and it was after Loose Groove has split from Sony Five Fifty. So it was no loose groove, you know. It was no loose groove anymore. We didn't have a record deal after loose groove split off with Sony, basically. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have, we didn't have a record deal. So we were recording, and the guys that we were recording with, it was in the beginning stages of Pro Tools. To make a long story short, they lost, they lost everything. They lost all the tracks. Oh man. Yeah, so all I had was a rough mix of everything, and that's what the album is, it's just a rough mix. So I played the rough mix for Norwood and Fishbone, and he was like, I'll put that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, he put it out on uh, Nutsacker <laughs> 5, and uh, yeah, so that's what, that's what happened with that. But that's all from a, um, just a rough mix on CD, that's where that album is from. And a lot of people like that album. They think they'd like say, oh, oh, it's so lo-fi. I'm like, this is just a rough mix from CD. But they like it, though. Yeah, I like um, Strawberry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me, t let me tell you about Strawberry, too. You know, uh, Trevor Lawrence, he does a lot of, he plays with Dr. Dre. He's playing drums on that. Oh, really? Yeah, he does a lot with, uh, with Dr. Dre. He played on his whole uh, album. Um, but oh. he, him, oh, he, that, go ahead. That out, al yeah, that album we recorded on a uh, eight eight track reel, uh, uh, Tascam eight track reel at this place. That was a back. It was a back house space on La Brea near Santa Monica Boulevard, and it was called. I call it the Nut House, and it was a back house with a uh, bamboo trees and and um it was like a, a tropical little back house space but charlie chaplin used to own own this place this uh, little back house space that's where we rehearsed at and we recorded a lot part of illuminati in that studio in that studio too where we used to have parties backyard rent parties basically mm -hmm. and, a, and a lot of bands were formed in the nut house including Deca, the hip-hop orchestra the Double G, shout out Double G, the hip hop orchestra, the Ka. Wow. Um, yeah, but yeah. Strawberry Sites, that's one of my favorites too. I love how like how patient uh, um, Trevor Lawrence's drum playing is. You know, his hit, his Trevor Lawrence, his mom is Mary Wilson from Motown, from really? the Supremes. Yeah, wow. and and his dad is a sax player from. Um, Marvin Gaye and all the uh, Stevie Wonder, and he played on a lot of the classic songs um, from Motown. But that's Trevor Lawrence. He played on Strawberry Sice, and he was our drummer for a while. Um, when I met him, I used to play with him with Blackbird. Was, um, I had a band with uh, Blackbird called Southwest Roulette, and, <laughs> and uh, how long and did that last? To, we used to just do improv shows. We would just play. We would just play. It. We played like uh, it lasted about a, a year. We weren't playing consistent, but we played shows. You know, like we played at the Music Machine. We played the Coconut Teaser a couple of times. We played at at different places, but we would just improvise. You know, and um, so Trevor Lawrence. When I met him, he was like. He was in the jazz, so he was all, he was flash, he was really flashy. And um, so we just, we gave him a lot of coaching on just like calming down and, and just just playing the groove, you know. And he ended up playing with Weapon of Choice, but I love that track uh, that you mentioned, Strawberry Sites, because I can hear his like self-discipline and his growth, you know, and how patient he plays in that song. He's like just so laid back. And you know his time is so impeccable. Yeah, I could feel that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know I didn't know who was playing on it though. So 
Yeah. Because uh, I don't know if you have, of course, I don't have, there's no credits on this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you have any other questions about who's playing on anything else, let me know. I will. Um, mm -hmm. And this was your first solo, right? Basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, that would be dope. Yeah. How'd you feel about going off on your own and kind of doing, being, you know, up front more for the first time? Um, well, you, you know, I, I felt fine. I, I just, it's all been a continuous process for me because I've, I've been doing all along up until this very day exactly what I've been doing since I started, which is I still practice, I still create. That's what experiment, you know. That's what I love to do. I, when people like to jam, that's how we Weapon of Choice started. We, we would jam together, and that's how we created, you know, a lot of those songs was from just jamming. I love to jam. I love to create. I love to play. I still do all those things, you know. And so that's where, that's where um, what zone I'm in. Um, and uh, I don't know. Does that answer the question? <laughs> yeah. I love uh, hip-hop. Um Hip hop mystic, hip hop to mystic. Yeah. yeah, that is a jam. Oh, thank you, bro. Yeah, fish, that one. Fish, fish is playing on that one. That's one of those ones that first time I heard, I was just like, "Whoa, this is a groove." Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, I thought it should have gotten, you know, some pl more more attention. You know, well, it's a yeah. lot of tracks I think should have gotten more attention by more people, but that's one of them. Yeah. Well, thank you, Wop. That inspires me to uh, revisit that because I, I have the session, and I can do something with it and put out put it out again, in a different way. You know, I'll put a whole another twist on it, for sure. Well, also, uh, it's hard to um, brain nutrition. Yeah, <laughs> brand nutrition. Yeah, brand that's nutrition. with my yeah. with my brother Arik is playing guitar on that. And then uh, satisfaction is like kind of it's a little pop more poppy than like some of your stuff, but it's still funky. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know Matt Chamberlain is uh, the drummer. Yeah, yeah. Matt Chamberlain plays with everybody. You know, he plays with uh, Alanis Morissette. Uh, what's the lady, young lady? To, uh, these days, she's got black hair. I can't think of her name. But uh, Lana Del Rey. Uh, oh. Uh -huh. And Jewel, he plays Macy Gray, he plays Jewel, uh, uh, Tori Amos, he plays on everybody's record. But he played on our first record, too. He played on the uh, the part you thought in uh, You Owe It To You, there's a live, um, the, the potty chant, the nutmeg potty chant. There's a snippet of that in the beginning of, of the intro of You Owe It To You on the first album. That's Matt Chamberlain playing on uh, nutmeg potty chant, too. So yeah, he's playing on uh, Satisfaction, and we recorded that one in Seattle at Stone Studio Litho. Swing like nothing. That's another. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We can swing like nothing. Yeah. That one's jazzy and funky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love. Yeah, I love. Uh, yeah, I love all the styles. You know. It's, it's fascinating to me. To, um, you know, I was just listening to uh, Duke Ellington. You ever heard his Nutcracker Suite? No, no pun intended. Duke Duke Ellington I Nutcracker don't know, Suite. I don't know offhand because I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know his his catalog that well. Whoa! Somebody told me he's in the Guinness Book for the hugest catalog, huge of uh, published songs. Hmm. Um, but yeah, if you check that one out, that one is. That's amazing, amazing healing, medicine. Yeah, that's some sonic medicine right there. And the whole album is on YouTube also. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Swing Like Nothing. That's a, I, I love that song too. Yeah, and it seemed like <laughs> a lot of the records you like kind of lean toward putting something a little mellower at the back end of them. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of your records have sort of a jazzy, mellower kind of closer. Yeah, yeah, it's um, just sort of a dynamic balance, you know, to the record. I don't, I, you know, I don't really uh, like things to be one-dimensional or predictable, to where um, you know it's going to be expected. Like, 
And you can hear the first bar, bar you can tell what's going to happen. Or after the first chorus, you can tell what's going to happen after the rest of the song. You know, I always want to put something in there to, to add that unpredictable chaos element in there, you know. Of I, I, I look at it as danger, which is reality, you know, which is what is exciting to me about Funkadelic is the danger element of the, you know, when I first heard the music, it sounded dangerous, you know. And looking at the covers and, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, not, you know, in more, in more ways than one, though, you know, but musically dangerous because you could tell these guys are just going for it and they're just feeling it. They're just playing it. They're not just. They're not thinking like, "Oh, wait a minute. If, is this going to be cool if I play this? You know, or are they going to like this if I play this or sing this?" They're just. They're just feeling it. You know, it, the emotions are in motion. You know, <laughs> and so uh, that's the dangerous element, though, that makes that magical brew. You know, so impactful and effective. You know, and that when others hear it. You know, there's this thing that I like to say, Lonnie. When I talk to people about music, and for me, it's always been I listen to music to get stimulated. Whereas I know a lot of people say that, oh, I listen to music to chill out or relax. Maybe sometimes, but mostly I want to be stimulated. Whether, and you can be stimulated in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it doesn't have yeah. to be that you're getting hyped, but, mm -hmm. you know, intellectually, uh, in your soul, whatever it is have it move you and get stimulated by it you know mm. don't be passive with it you know wow. and, and that's why i like challenging music and music that might keep you off balance or throw some people off balance like you're talking about where it changes up mm -hmm. yeah that's a beautiful way to put it too and that's what i i listen to music too for is stimulation you know? there's certain songs are, stimu are stimulating and healing but songs have always saved me you know music has always saved me from whatever it was you know there was a song that could save me from it you know no matter what it was you know it's like i heard a song and it was like wow i get i get something or i'm it, it makes me uh, gives me a new perspective now i feel new like after hearing that in this way even if i heard the song before after hearing it at this moment, you know, that I needed to hear it, it has a whole new uh, meaning for me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what the great music does, and it just, you know, it's forever, too. Yes, eternal. Art is yeah. eternal. Yeah. Yeah, um, energy is eternal, too. Like, that's the thing I, th I think... Uh, that, uh, you know, it's like energy. Anybody that ever influenced me is a part of me, whether they're physically here or not. So they're alive. They're right. alive in me. You know, Junie is part of everything I do, you know. Jim, anybody that's ever influenced me, Junie, Jimi Hendrix, Bruce Lee, Muhammad Ali, Bob Marley, you know. <clears throat> Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, they're all here. It's, it's energy, you know. It's like really energy that's like energy that is having this conversation. It's not the uh, the physical matter that's having it, you know. We can't see that part, but <laughs> that where does that part go, you know? Where was it when when you were? Do you when's the earliest you could remember in your life? In my life? Yeah. Um, like probably around three or four years old. Yeah. But they're just little, blur, you know, blips kind of. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you can remember back then when you were, a diff you were a whole different entity physically in the material, but you could, you're still attached to that memory, what is that? That means you're eternal. That's, that's evidence to me because you went through that from this, you know, a small to the size that you're at, you're at the present size. And you still have a memory over that whole period that, you know, I don't know. That's a, uh, that's just something I thought about recently. I was like, wow, that tells me because I had a close friend that just transcended a uh, drummer, Bluefoot. Oh, yeah. 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 And he's an amazing, amazing human. But I feel like I'm 
connected with him. He's, I can I can con have conversations with him and everything. Is I can tune into. It's all about frequency. Yeah. Like we're tuning we're tuning into a frequency right now. You dedicated you know? a, a track to him, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Funky Fridays, which yeah. he was uh, he was one of the vocalists on too. Yeah, and um, so I think that people are eternal. Also, we're taught that we're one thing. Like people identify with their I. Like, I'm this physical thing, I'm Lonnie, I'm a musician, I'm a te bass music teacher, whatever. I, I did this, I did that, but what we are, we re you really can't even see, or you really can't even quantify what we are. And, you know, you, you know so we're, um, like, not something that can be labeled, but that's what we're, that's where we're at. Uh, that's the reality that we live in, is, is of, of labels, a reality of labels. But I, I think the mu the music, though, consciously and subconsciously, taps into some of that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it does, it, and it taps into our physiology. Uh, literally, the music heals. Like the house parties, people were actually getting healed by the carbon-based records spinning around with the needle. This is all carbon-based which is the essence of life and everything in life is carbon based every you know it's in everything so the records the turntables the the wax is carbon based and the needle carbon based was healing people actually healing people in the house parties and i've been healed by records many times yeah you just bring back memories of those i used to go to those house parties when i lived in los angeles <laughs> growing up and packed and just sweat boxes and just <laughs> the music was just you know funk was in its heyday and those parties yeah. were amazing but uh yeah you know dripping sweat in there and uh <laughs> yeah um i want to mention another track on that record line before i forget about it um, uh -huh. long way back and yeah this brought brings to mind like someone that hasn't been mentioned and maybe i'm off base you can tell me but that track to me i hear influence in it from like not only funkadelic but all the way to like an average white band kind of groove you know mm -hmm. yeah i'm influenced by average white band too absolutely love of your own schoolboy crush schoolboy crush yeah pick up the pieces yeah i was influenced by all of that like shoot i was influenced by some bands that only had one song that was like really to me like I would listen, I hear this one song and just be blown away, but, and then I'd look for more stuff, but it wasn't quite, you know, the same impact as that one song where they created and reached this magical zenith, you know, at that particular time. And, uh, you know, but I was influenced by everything. I lived in Desert Hot Springs for a while, and uh, for a little while, and um, at the time, you know, um, they were playing like uh, Neil Sedaka and uh, Elton John was on the radio out there. That's what I was hearing a lot of on the radio. And then at a football, I, I was uh, I was on I played football too, like little league football. And at a practice, these guys, these dudes, older dudes on the team had a boombox, and they played Steve Miller, uh, the Joker. I was like, whoa, this is. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I was like, that is funky hey, you know, right there. That's funky, yeah. <laughs> it is funky, man. I try to yeah. tell people all the time that threads of funk run through so many different genres, you know? Yeah, it's not just one thing or one one particular aesthetic, you know? It can be anything, you know? it's a, To me, it's just synchronicity and uh, some kind of balance amidst chaos. That's, that's my favorite funk. Not like predictability. My least favorite kind of funk is the kind that's like cliche and uh, you could tell it's trying to be like something, you know. Like there were so many songs that were uh, written uh, based on One Nation Under a Groove, you know, that came out. And, uh, you know, there were so many impact. There, there were like certain grooves that came out that were just so impactful that a lot oh, of people like... Atomic Dog, More Bounce, yeah yeah more bounce really more bounce yeah yeah that one uh more bounce would like to go back before that it was like 
to uh, to me it was like um, Silver's Leon Silver's. I, I love Leon Silver's bass playing. Oh yeah. And his writing uh, with uh, Misdemeanor. Yeah. Foster Silver's. Yeah. And and that um, from from uh, from Leon Silver's to Sheik also Bernard Edwards. Well, good bass times. Yeah. So many people yeah. copied that. Yeah, so many people copy that, but they're kind of related. Like to me, it's like Jamerson, and you could tell that Leon Silvers was influenced by Jamerson, but he was doing he had his own thing too. And you could tell by uh, Bernard Edwards was influenced by Leon Silvers and Jamerson, but he was doing his own thing, you know, too. So, like, and there were certain grooves that like became like a a staple, like a a, a like benchmark, a, te a template. Yeah. 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 Well, and especially when they started sampling them, then, you know, it was actually the same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were go actually going to the sample. Yeah. And you, you have a long way back. And um, Josh Freeze from the Vandals, and he played with Devo, too. He's playing drums on that one. So, got, and we, rec we recorded that at, in Seattle also. And actually, Stone is playing bass on that one, I think, too. Hmm. Long way back. Stone. I got this one here. Um, I think you're on this record too, right? Your brothers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These aren't easy to find, you know. <laughs> I think yep, I, <laughs> he would appreciate knowing that I got this. I'm sure. That is awesome. I'm sure he would. Big ups to my little brother. Yeah, this is a good record. And another, I think he he should gotten more attention with this stuff too. Yeah, some stuff just like people ain't ready for it, you know, it's like they're so used because like we're non-conventional, you know, we like to do our own thing. We like to not sound like the whatever we're influenced by even, you know, I don't want to sound like what I'm influenced by. Really, I'm in inspired by it, but I don't want to sound like it. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to do that. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm like influenced by that, but I'm influenced by Zappa and you know all kind of other stuff also Duke Ellington so I'm gonna incorporate everything I'm not trying to focus on honing in and, and uh, narrowing myself down to like oh I got to sound just like this but yeah cameo I was influenced by too you know yeah that's like, not a that's not a bad thing um, cameo was awesome yeah. and I seen him seen him live too with uh, Jonathan Moffat yeah, I saw, I saw what was probably their first West Coast show at the um, Palladium in Hollywood, mm. like in '77 yeah. or something like that. They were wild. They were like Fishbone before Fishbone. Yeah, <laughs> and Larry Blackman was a drummer, huh? Yeah, he was singing and playing the drums. He's an awesome drummer. And their really horn, their guys, they were. I mean, it was it was frenetic. They were all over that stage. Yeah, and they were they chore they were choreographed too when they with their uh, their activity. So this was they they, they weren't well. It didn't seem very choreographed. It was kind of like you know organized <laughs> chaos, a little bit like P Funk when I saw. It. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It might. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. The track so many so many great bands. You know, it was like a it was like a lot of bands like Fatback Band they yeah. actually had had the first hip hop song on the radio a lot, a lot of people think it was uh, think it was uh, Rapper's Delight but it was actually King Tim the 3rd from the yeah. Fatback Band yeah that's a, a good track it was the first hip hop song that was dope track yeah groove you know and I like the girls that didn't sound like nothing else you know it's like I like that kind Bill of Curtis punk, you know? yeah oh El Curtis Mayfield exactly like yeah tripping out uh all that other stuff and yeah bluefoot told me that uh something i didn't know about curtis mayfield's band but curtis mayfield's band were like pretty much youth that he was he, he like mentor they were like kind of his nephews as uh the bass player was the son of the singer of of the impressions one of the singers in the Impre Curtis Mayfield's Impressions, which was before Superfly and stuff, but he that was the bass player. Lucky was the son of uh, you know his partner in Impressions, and the drummer, uh, the drummer and the guitar player, they were both brothers. But um, yeah, I loved Curtis Mayfield too. You know, there was certain like lyrics. I I loved. Uh, 
you know, I love the lyrical, the poetic part about it too, you know, because I like Muhammad Ali, you know, and he like really introduced me to a lot of poetry and stuff, you know what I mean? The power of poetry, you know, <laughs> and humor and, and poetry and insight in poetry. So, um, but I was influenced by Sly Stone with lyrics and, uh, and um, Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield, um, very unique style and sound. You know, that's when you're talking about trying to, you know, take in influences but have it come out as something original. Mm -hmm. He's an original for sure. Um, yeah. You and know. so many, so many people were influenced by him, including Jimi Hendrix, and you know everybody else with that guitar, his guitar plan and his vocal style, his songwriting. You know everything. He's yeah. so influential. And he's funky, but not in necessarily the kind of way that most other people are funky. He's got his own kind of funk. Yeah, it's a certain like uh, natural, authentic funk. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's just like a expression. Like to me, Bread. You know the band Bread. Yeah. That did. Hey, have you ever tried? Make I want to. I want to make, make it with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's funky. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, what's the name? Uh, so far away is funky. <laughs> oh, that's Carol. Uh, King. Carol King. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the earth move. That is funky. That's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a uh, that's the DVD. The uncut nut. Yeah. So you mentioned about you know you're performing on stage before. This is a great package. I can't recommend it enough to viewers to see you know you guys really kicking butt on stage. Uh, they can get that too. I still have uh, have copies. They can contact me. Um, can I give them a contact? Absolutely. Meganut one at Hotmail. Contact me if you want to get that, or if you're on Facebook, Lonnie Marshall with the green light bulb head. Yeah, just so viewers know what's on here, it's got uh, parts of four shows and uh, lots of other stuff too. So two two DVDs. Yep, two D six hours. Yeah, it's a it's a bunch of stuff. George is on there. There's a show he sat in with us in uh, San Francisco. Uh, it's a show with me sitting in with Primus or Les Claypool and me and Flea playing. And uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there. Yeah, that's was so much fun to just watch it for the first time, especially you know, just discover everything that was on there. All right on. Where'd you get Where'd you get that from? I mean, I got it when I was still living in California. I, I don't remember exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I haven't even I haven't even seen it myself. Like I usually don't even like like after I finish with something, I just I go on to the next thing. Like that's that's just the way I am. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. That's actually you know I'm I'm so glad that you got it all together digitally this year because your um your catalog was kind of you know i'll i don't want to you know offend you or insult you but it was kind of like scattered in a way and kind of you know if somebody was just getting into your music they would be challenged to kind of track it all down and kind of you know really get it all and and know yeah. the the extent of it and, and all the great stuff that's been recorded yes yes um and I have to thank uh, my friend John Weber and his brother James Weber. They helped a lot with that uh, digital aspect of it. John Weber, and um, you know, getting the the cat entire catalog in a digital format in a place where people can get it. And uh, MeganUpMusic.com is the web website to all the music is on on uh, Bandcamp. Spotify, iTunes, all of that. Yeah, high time, man. So, but in total, it, it's it's basically six full albums and some other EPs and stuff, right? Yeah. 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 And I continue to put out singles too. I have another single I'm going to put out next Friday as well, a new one. Nice. And today, actually. 
a song I wrote for Trulio Disgracious uh, years ago. Uh, Norwood just released a Trulio Disgracious song that I wrote called Who in the, Who in the F Are You? <laughs> I have a version of that on a CD of theirs from like quite a while ago. From Trulio? Yeah. It's wow. like a six song EP or something like that. I don't have it. It's sit in another room somewhere, but yeah. Uh huh. I don't yeah. even know for sure who's on that particular one, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, I'm playing bass on this one, Norwood singing, and a lot of other people. Cool. I know they just did like a live stream not too long ago. I didn't get to catch it, but it was good to yeah. see that they were, you know, keeping it going. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Norwood's good for that, for get, definitely getting people together and, uh, you know, uh, finding a way to uh, keep people in that uh, sandbox playing with each other, you know, that, so that people aren't uh, perpetually afraid of each other, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm, that ins that's really inspiring uh, to me about Norwood, you know. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm, uh, I've, been, I've been talking to him. I'm hoping to have him come on to do an interview, too, but he's kind of... He's hard to nail down. He's he's always on the move, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the move. He's on the move. He's a busy, busy man. Yeah, I'll get him on. I mean, he said he uh -huh. wants to do it, so but it's just a matter of working it out. Yeah. Yeah, so looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. he'll do it. So um, before we wrap this up, and thanks so much, man, for spending all this time. I appreciate it. Um, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. What... Is there anything you can look back on um, to this point? I know you said you don't like to look back, but I'm going to try to. I, for, I'm going to force you to a little bit. Well, I didn't say I don't like to look back. I, I say I usually don't. You know, like look at what I did. Like if I did a video or something like that, I don't really look at it. And you know, I, I, I'm moving on. Or if I do a song, if I spend a certain amount of time on a song. And you know, after I've done it, I'm like, wow, this is gonna, this is gonna make a difference for people. And I put it out. I'm like, on to the next song. That's what I'm focused on. Always forward looking. Yeah. 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 But I, I like to look back too. So where are we going? <laughs> well, I want to know <laughs> if, if what would you say was like your most unforgettable musical experience? Is there anything that like stands out? Whether it was a particular show. Or hanging with a particular cat, or you know, of the one or two things that just kind of, man, I did that or that happened. Well, the thing that uh, blows me away, and um, the one instant is George Clinton introduced me to Sly Stone as a young genius. That has to be the tops. When was that? That was, um, when was that? That was in the 2000s. It was like after like early 2000s. So after the mammoth recordings that never yeah. saw the light of day? Yeah. Yeah, and I would say uh, another would be I played, I did a residency at uh, a big uh, L.A. Uh, happening spot called Michelle's Triple X, which was Peanuts, and Jay-Z shouted it out on, on one of his songs. But everybody used to come there from Hip Hop, Busta Rhymes, Jay-Z, Dog Pound, Boo, uh, the Booyah Tribe were the security. But I used to, it was a ladies for ladies strip club. Mike Tyson used to come, you know. But, you know, so I used to play with whoever was, was whoever came and the band was called one nut stand mm -hmm. and it was it was all improv but my intention was just to have people hold a groove enough to where somebody can get on the mic and freestyle you know let the ladies freestyle you know um so one night we're playing and uh you know i'm getting the band like just just i'm playing i'm looking at the drummer like lock you know like zoning in with the drummer we get getting in, getting a band to get a groove going so we can get the freestyle going and uh you know so we get a groove going and then i turn around and 
I look over and Prince is sitting like about like five feet away from me with his cane and he had his he had his head down and his eyes closed and he was grooving to my, <laughs> to what I was playing. And I was like I felt like I was having an out of body experience, you know, I'm like, what is he is wait a minute, you know, this is <laughs> okay. This is this is unfathomable. And he was he was into it and so people were like like really panicking. They were like coming up in my face like saying, Prince is over there, you know. Like, you know, uh and Prince is over there, like getting up in my face. Um, and I I uh you know, I said, somebody freestyle. I don't know you know, I know why I said it then, but you know, if I had the opportunity again I wouldn't have invited anybody to freestyle. But uh this guy got on the mic and started rapping and, and Prince got up and he just walked out in like grand fashion, you know, he's like walk <laughs> Like, what what year do you think that was, Lonnie? <laughs> that was, uh, had to be like, I think that was like uh, around 90, 99, somewhere. Yeah, it might have been 99. So he was. Might have, might have been 19. Yeah, and we were on party like it's 1999, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was right around the time when he started to, to get called Prince again after being the symbol. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I met him again too. Um, actually, um, at this party, a uh, friend of mine, Tori Ruffin, guitar player, he, uh -huh. who plays with with the Time, they were having an after party, and Prince was the host of it at House of Blues. So like, uh, we all went from from the show, the Times show, to the House of Blues. The Times show was in uh, PCH, and. Uh, so we went to the show, and he was greeting everybody at the door. You know, my my lady I was with was like freaking out. You know, when she saw him like <laughs> greeting everybody at the door, she was like, "There go Prince!" There go <laughs> freaking out. But yeah, he was like he was mellow. It was just a couple of people there too. Like and he was just hanging out, just chilling. And and um, Morris Day, him and Morris Day, they were like kid. They were like youngsters in a on a playground. You know, they were like laughing and. Just so playful, their their interaction was so brotherly, you know, loving. It's beautiful. Wow. Well, you mentioned Prince, Sly, and George. That's uh, pretty impressive. That's hard to top. What 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 did Sly seem like the the time that you saw him? Uh, he was he was beautiful, man. He was looking he was looking right at me, like looking. You know, looking me right in the eyes, you know, and smiling. He had a big smile, and uh, he just seemed, you know, he's just a beautiful. You know, I see people like magicians, and you know what I mean, and like archetypes, like you see in all the movies, like on the hero's journey. It's like all you you meet all these characters, like you meet a mentor, you meet allies, you know. But like certain people come along, it could be somebody on the street or, or whatever. But you know, they're there for to give you a light, a certain light, you know, a charge to charge your electromagnetic force. You know what I'm saying? And so Sly gave me that too. It was like I was both, I was charged by both of them. You know, did did George you get a, Did you get Sly. a chance to convey to him how much he had meant to you? You know, as you were coming up. Yeah, I so I. I did. I told him, thank you so much for your music and how much it made an impact on me. Mm -hmm. And he was real, he was real gracious and appreciative, you know. And I'm so glad I got to, got a chance to uh, thank him for his music and, you know, George. And uh, I thank Bill Withers, you know. I saw Bill Withers in it. He was in a uh, SUV turning on Sunset and I was walking. And I saw him behind. This was a couple years ago, and I saw him. Saw him driving at the stoplight. He's he's letting me cross the street, and I look back. I'm like, is that Bill Withers? I'm like, that's Bill Withers. I'm like, thank you so much for your music, you know. <laughs> and he rolled down the window, and he's like, thank you. I appreciate that. You know? <laughs> so like, yeah, people uh, people really appreciate it, and I'm glad I've got to I got to thank. Some of the people that made a big influence on my life. Wow, 
Yeah, I, I got to see Prince at House of Blues uh, perform one time. Well, I saw him there more than once, but one time it was Maceo Parker was doing a show there, and I had a feeling that Prince might show up, and he not only showed up, but he took over the whole thing and did a full-blown <laughs> show. So wow. that was an awesome experience. Wow. Yeah, he's incredible. It's like incredible that we're... We got. This, I'm so grateful to live in the time where those people are here, you know, and, that, yeah. and we wit we witness and experience those people, you know. This is a magical time, no matter what is going on or what anybody says. This is a magical. This is the place to be, and we're here because we're here. And thank you for doing what you do, and generating what you do, bro. And you like you're shining the light on so many others and that's what it's about it's about shining the light on others that's what you, that's a power that's a superpower and you're a superhero <laughs> well thanks man right back at you um i mean i just want to be able to give back you know because the music has meant so much to me and continues to and you know my life would just not be i can't i don't want to imagine it without it but it's just been such a guiding force for my existence that I got to give back, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's awesome, brother, where you certainly are making a difference in the world, and it sends out a ripple effect that's really transformational to everybody and everything. And it's really appreciated. I'm, I'm grateful to, and honored to be on your show. Hey, well, I'm grateful. I'm grateful and honored too. And uh, it's been, you know, everything I had hoped it would be just wrapping with you. So I appreciate it. And so good to get to know you better too, you know? Uh, thank you. Likewise, brother. Um, I, I just want to want to uh, share one more thing mm -hmm. that I'm very proud of. I wrote a rap for Bette Midler, if you can believe that. <laughs> And the, and the divine first line, Miss, Div, divine Miss M. That's her. Yeah. Divine Miss M. And the first line of the rap is, "Who put the hoe in Hollywood?" <laughs> 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 and she, that's the first line I showed her when we were on. It was on the set for her TV show. It's on YouTube too. It's called uh, "Color of Roses." Is the show? But I'm rapping with her, with her on there, and and so I showed her um, the line. That was. Tony Basil, you know who Tony Basil is? Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, she's legendary dance choreographer too, of like a lot of people. She she choreographed uh, David Byrne doing that thing, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people. But she got she used to come see Weapon of Choice, and I became friends with her, and she got me to write a rap and be on Bette Midler's TV show. Oh, that's so when, when I was writing the rap. I said, I, I said, who put the hole in Hollywood? And I showed Bette Midler the line, and she's like, yeah, I love that. Keep going. <laughs> so she let me keep going. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm very proud of that, too. <laughs> Even Bette Midler's funky, you know? Yeah, she's funky. Mm -hmm. That's wild, man. You've gotten your uh, toe dipped in, like, all kinds of different little ponds you know yeah you, you know like it, it comes from i think not fitting in you know it's like not it being that i grew up not fitting in i can't help but stand out so i have to always stand out you know just automatically you know and um this naturally means stand outward in whatever my vision is you know and so, like, my vision is play, it has, is, is rooted in play, really. And so, Tony Basil used to come see me play. Chili Peppers used to come see us play. A lot of people used to come see us play and got influenced by us. And I feel blessed and grateful. And it's all from the magic of play. Yeah. Well, your play is my weapon of choice, you know. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I love that. Um, do you think that the band, you might get the, the, the band out under that name again once, you know, this pandemic ends and all that? It's, it's possible. You know, I played a show with the original 
we don't we we don't play we haven't played like consistently a lot in LA because I didn't want to uh, oversaturate playing you know and uh, a lot of different members are doing a lot of different things and families and stuff but the original members uh, Kefis who was who was uh, my main collaborator with Weapon of Choice he just emailed me last week. So, um, you know, anything is possible. I did a show a couple of years ago, which was the last Weapon of Choice we did, show we did at, uh, at an event in L.A. And Keith has played with us. And Mary Harris, who was on the Hyper Spice record, she also played with us. And Jelly Bean was there. And uh, Mark Cross, keyboard player, Weapon of Choice. Yeah, Mark Cross, I, I went to middle school with him. He's a keyboard player, and he sings also with Weapon of Choice. Um, me and him started playing around the same time, too. We went to the same middle school. Yeah, Mark Cross, he's putting out music, too. He just put out an album. Check him out also, Mark Cross. Mark Cross. Well, I, I hope you get back out there so maybe I get a chance, you know, to see you again. So. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna yeah. do it definitely. We're gonna cool. do it. We're gonna make. We had. We actually had a show book before this thing happened. We had a show book too. Um, yeah, but uh, we had a show book for April, I think, and it got canceled. So, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get back to it, and you know. I haven't left the playful zone, you know, so I'm still right. I'm going to take up right where I left off, you know, and um, take it all the way to another level. Well, the only thing I like better than the stage is new creations, you know, so keep them coming. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. I've got one coming uh, next week. So I'm going to keep cool. them coming. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. Um, is there any other, uh, other, did you cover all the websites and all that stuff? We got it all? We got everything. Meganutmusic.com is the website. And Meganut Music, one word, is the YouTube channel. Check that out. Lonnie Marshall on Facebook. Lonnie underscore Marshall Instagram. Lonnie Marshall Twitter. Check it out. All right. Peace to you, man, always. Thank you so much, Lonnie. All right. Peace and love to you, and peace and love to everybody out there tuning in. Much love, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, man. Hey, back at Truth and Rhythm headquarters. Thank you for joining us on another magical ride with Truth and Rhythm. Whether you're watching or listening, as always, thank you so much for your continued interest and support. Be sure to subscribe. Go to YouTube. Go to the Funkin' Stuff channel. That's where Truth and Rhythm lives and breathes and thrives. Also, goodies here like TIR Quick Takes. And if you subscribe, you know what? You get the show before anyone else. It's free. If you love jazz, funk, R&B, soul, you can't miss it. Pass it along. Tell a friend. Tell family. This audience is growing, and it is a beautiful thing, all coming together for the love of this great music. Also, if you can throw us a buck or two, we could use the support financially, keeping the lights on, keeping the servers going, all these expenses. If you can help support the program, whatever you can give, much appreciated. Go to the FunkinStuff.net website. And on the right-hand side of every page, you just click and you can donate through PayPal, credit card, whatever. Very easy to do and so much appreciated. And if you do a sizable donation, I will mention you on the program. Also, drop me a line. Email me at scottg at funkinstuff.net. Let me know who else you'd like to see on the show, what you enjoy about the music. Let's just kibitz and uh, talk about stuff, you know, talk music. You'll find that I respond very quickly, and I much enjoy the uh, rapport and the camaraderie and the interaction. Always remember, this is your show, The True Music Lover. So for now, that's all the time we have for this one. It's a wrap. As always, Scott Dr. GX Goldfine saying, keep on vibrating to the rhythm of the one.